Good afternoon, it's Mr. Montgomery again, and today we're going to take all those skills that we learned this week and figure out how to use them to solve story problems. First, let's kind of go over uh, a, a math problem that we did similar to what we did yesterday. So let's say they tell us our whole number is 9. And then below, it gives this big box And it tells one part. Let's say our one part is going to be five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then what we did to figure out this part we don't know over here is we counted on from five. And we would draw circles until we counted all the way up to nine. So let's do that. Remember, you don't have to write anything down. I'm just reviewing this from yesterday to refresh our minds. So when we start counting off from five, we're going to say five first. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I counted to nine. As I was drawing, I know that I need to stop because I counted all the way up to our whole number right there. And now I can look at it, and the part that they told us was 5, and the part that we found out was 4. And now we can take all this and write a fancy number sentence. And it means that 9, our whole number that goes first, minus 5, equals 4. That's all this means. So you always put your whole number first, and then you put the part that we know second, and then this part that we just found out goes all the way at the very, very end. So today, we're going to take that same skill, and we're going to read stories about math, and we're going to figure it out using those same skills. So this one you can do with me. Let's draw a line right across the middle here because we're going to need two spaces. Okay, so we'll do number one up here. And we'll do number two down here. Okay, so first let's do number one. Let's say that there are six ducks in a pond. So first they tell us the whole number which is six ducks. So I'm going to draw six boxes. I'm going to pretend they're ducks. Two, three, four, five, and six. Here's our six ducks. And Let's say they tell us that two of these ducks flew away. Okay, so we have two pieces of information. So first, let's write down our whole number, six. And then they tell us that two ducks flew away. That's our first part that they tell us. Now, how do we figure out how many ducks are left in this pond? Well, since we have a picture up here, we have our six, which is the whole number, and we know the part that they want us to know, which is two. You know what we could do? We can just cross out two ducks, because they flew away. And how many blocks do we have left? Let's count them. One, two, three, and four. So that's the part we know, and that always, or the part we didn't know, and that goes last. So first is the whole number that they told us, which is all the ducks in the pond. And then the part that we were told, which is that two ducks flew away. So then we cross out two ducks. And then the part we didn't know over here was how many ducks were left. But with this little picture, they're able to cross out two ducks. And then we counted how many were left. And that was the subtraction problem. It's pretty easy. I'm pretty sure you guys are thinking the same thing. 
Let's try one more, but with a bigger number. This time, let's do nine ducks. So let's draw nine boxes. Go ahead and draw these boxes with me. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's our nine ducks. Nine ducks in a pond. So first thing we have to do, they told us the whole number. We have to write that down. So go ahead for number two, write nine as our whole number. Because it's the same pattern for every subtraction. First we have the whole. We have the part. And then we have another part. So W stands for whole. The P stands for part. And the other P stands for part. So right now, in number two, we have our whole number, which is nine. They told us nine ducks. Now let's say that they tell us that three of these ducks flew away. Well, how are we going to figure that out? We can do the same thing that we did for this first problem up here. So if they tell us that three ducks flew away, it's going to be nine minus three. And since they told us one part, we can figure out this other part over here. And by, if we do the same thing up here, I'm pretty sure you've already guessed what we're going to do. We're going to cross out three ducks. One, two, three. How many ducks are left? Let's count it and make sure that we are all thinking the same number. One, two, three. Four, five, and six. Six ducks are left in the pond. So the part we didn't know is six, but we figured it out. So nine, the whole number, nine, minus three, the three ducks that flew away, equals six. We have six ducks left in the pond. Okay, so now I'm going to give you guys a minute. I would like you all to open up your booklets and go to the first page. All right, I'll give you guys another couple seconds. Your paper should look just like mine. All right, let's read this problem together. They kind of did it for us, but that's okay, because we're still going to solve it together so we know how to solve this problem. Dan has six pails. You know what? We heard a very important piece of information. They told us our whole number. So let's circle that whole number so we don't forget it. Then he gives two pails to Sue. You know what? They told us another really important piece of information. They told us our first part. So let's circle that first part so we don't forget that either. How many pails does Dan have left? Okay. So Dan has six pails, and they gave us our first part right here, or the whole number. So the whole number is six, and the first part is two. They gave us two cubes. So we're actually going to solve this two different ways. So first, let's practice the way that we did yesterday. By counting on all the way up until we reach that number. So we start with the number that we know, 2. So we say 2. Then we go on. So after 2, we have 3. Then 4, 5, 6. So we reach the whole number by counting on all the way to six. Now let's look at what we made. Okay, so let's count them how many dots we made. We made one, two, three, four. Oh, so they're saying that six minus two equals four. And now we can fill in this blank, or actually these dots. 
So the whole number is 6. Trace that 6. Next number is 2. That is the first part that they told us. The whole was 6. The first part was 2. Then the part we didn't know was 4. And then we could trace that 4. But we could also solve this the same way that we solved those ducks in the pond earlier. So first, what we can do is make a quick picture. First thing we're going to want to do is draw six circles. That's our quick picture, draw six. You can do this with me if you would like. Uh, if this other method is easier for you, you can keep doing that. But if you really like drawing quick pictures to help you solve things and double check your work, you can absolutely do it with me. Okay, so let's draw six circles. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six. That's our whole number. Then the part they gave us was two. So and the problem says Dan has six pails, then he gives two pails to Sue. So he gives them away. They're gone. So let's cross out two pails. One, two. Now that he gave them away and we crossed them out, we can count how many circles are left. Let's count them. One, two, three, and four. And look. We have four circles here, four circles here. We got the same answer. So we definitely know that it was four pails left. Okay, let's do number two. So I'm going to start you guys off, but then I would like you to try on your own, and we will go over it again together. So I first I'll read it. Seven children play. Then one child leaves. We already heard some really important things. So they tell us that seven children are playing. That sounds important. Circle it. Circle that number. It's important. Then one child leaves. That's also really important. So let's make sure we circle that. We don't want to forget it. How many children are still playing. Well, we know the whole, we know the part. We just need to figure out this other part over here where I'm having my mouse scribble a little bit over top of this empty box. We need to figure this out. So I'm going to give you guys a minute, figure it out, and then we're going to go over it together. So go ahead. Okay, I think I gave you guys enough time. Let's go over this problem. So they tell us the first, in the first sentence, our whole number, which is seven. And we know exactly where that goes in our number sentence. So let's write that down on our first line. That's always the whole number. Whole number. And then they tell us the first part, which is one. And we know that goes on the second line. Put a one right there, and that's always going to be the first part. Now we need to just figure out this part that we don't know. So we're going to try both methods again. First, let's try counting on with the shapes. So we always start with the number that we know. And here they give us one block. So we start counting from one all the way until we reach seven. All right, so count it with me. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, and seven. So I counted all the way up to seven while I was making shapes. Let's see how many we drew. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six dots. So they're telling it, or we figured out that the missing part is six. So six children are still playing. But you know what? If we want to do this a different way, we can. Let's try using this quick picture method and let's see if we come up with the same answer. So first we take our whole number, which is seven, and let's draw seven circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so here's our seven kids playing. And then they tell us that one kid leaves. He leaves. He doesn't want to play anymore. Maybe he has to go home and eat dinner. We don't know. But he leaves. So that means we have to take it away. Let's draw a line through one circle. So we drew a line through one circle. Let's see how many circles we have left. How many kids are still playing? So count with me. One. Two. Three. Four, five, and six. We have the same answer. We got six here. We have six here. Yep, we're good to go. The missing part was six children. Okay, so next, since we did uh, number one and two together, I'm pretty sure you guys can do some more all by yourself. So I'd like you to go on to the next page, do number three, four, and five all by yourself. So at this point, you can take off your headphones, take your papers and your pencils back to your desk, and, and do the whole next page by yourself. When you finish, then you can put those papers on my desk, and I'll check them to make sure that we're all on the same page. All right? Have fun, everyone.